Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Arnold Space Station. As part of today's episodes, we're gonna show you how you can turn Salesforce's B2B platform into a B2C platform using person accounts. As always, if you guys have been following the series, please don't forget to like the video or subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any comments, please don't forget to leave them down below. Let's go have a look at this episode. So, what are person accounts? Person accounts is a feature inside Salesforce, and by activating it, you will be able to sell directly to consumers. The reason this exists is because yes, there are businesses out there that do sell directly to consumers, uh, but at the same time, when you do sell things to consumers, you don't need to record any business details uh, as part of that. So activating this feature certainly removes that need inside Salesforce. So. There are two reasons why you would want to activate person accounts. According to me, let's take an example of a car dealership. Uh, we have certainly done one of these in the past for a customer of ours. And you know, they've got, they, they sell B to B, which means that they sell directly to businesses, and businesses come in and buy cars. And they also sell directly to consumer, in which case individuals uh, come through and buy cars. So as a result, it allows them to keep that data segmented, um, which is great for reporting, uh, and which is also great to know who you're actually dealing with, whether you're dealing with a business or whether you're dealing with a consumer. The second reason why it's important is because as those initial customers, they come back with more queries, you can log all of that against the actual consumer. Um, and that certainly helps because over time you can also choose to retarget and remarket to them if required. And it saves you double handling the data by re-entering the same details in two places. So, let's go ahead and see how we can activate this inside Salesforce. So once you've logged into Salesforce, you'll need to navigate to this setup section using the cogwheel or the icon that I've clicked on on the right hand side of the page. Once setup has loaded in a brand new window, using Quick Find, we need to look for account settings. By typing in account under sales, you'll be able to navigate to and locate account settings. Once you've clicked on that and it has loaded, what we need to do is we need to scroll down. We need to find person accounts. So clearly in here, I can see that person accounts is not enabled in this org. Perfect. So because person accounts is not enabled, let's go ahead and make a couple of changes. In order for us to create or enable person accounts, we need to ensure that at least one record type on the accounts exist. So I'm going to open up Object Manager in a brand new tab. Once Object Manager has loaded, we'll go into Account. Once you're in the Account Object configuration, scroll down and click on Record Types. Great, as you can see in a previous video, we show you how to go ahead and create record types, and we did so on the account. Now that we have at least one, in this case we've got two account record types, that's one checkbox so that we can move on to the next thing. Now, outside of having more than one record type, you need to make sure that users have the read permission on accounts and contacts, and also, Organization-wide default sharing is set so that the contact is controlled by the parent and the account and contact is private. So let's go into our organization-wide sharing settings and we can do so by searching for sharing in the, quick one, in the quick find box. Under security, you will notice that there is sharing settings. As we scroll down, you can see account and contract is in fact public. 
However, contact itself is controlled by the parent. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, click edit. And we'll change account and contract to be private. It will give you a pop-up saying that the opportunity must be private when the account access is set to private. That's not a problem. If we click OK, it'll do the same for case and a few other objects and it should automatically change them to private. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and click save. Beautiful. It will give us a little notification here saying that it is making the change to the sharing operation uh, and it might take a little while. Depending on how big your org is and how much data actually exists in it, it'll need to go ahead and make all those sharing permission changes. Great, so now that we've done that, we're going to go back into account settings. So that's the second checkbox ticked. I'm gonna go back into account settings and there is still one in here that we haven't addressed. And that is users that have read permission on accounts have read permission on contacts. Now that's perfectly fine in most cases, um, unless you have customized profiles, I would highly recommend you go in there and double check that. Uh, but in this case, we do not have highly customized profiles as part of this particular org. Uh, and therefore, anyone that has access to contacts will also have access to accounts. So once you have gone ahead and addressed number two uh, by checking all profiles in your own Salesforce org, what we'll do is we'll click the edit button in here. And as I scroll down, I am going to click on the checkbox to allow support to enable person accounts. So once you've gone ahead and clicked on allow customer support to enable person accounts, what you need to do is you need to click on your profile picture or avatar, go into settings. In your own settings, you need to click on grant account login access and ensure that salesforce.com support does in fact have at least a week of account access to your account. So they can verify all the different changes that you've made before they go ahead and properly activate it. Now, once you've gone ahead and given them access, the next thing you need to do is you need to raise a Salesforce case. And let's go ahead and see how we can do this. Cut. Action. So in order for us to raise a Salesforce case, uh, you need to click on the question mark. When you hover over it, you'll notice that it says Salesforce, Salesforce help. Once you click on that, click on get support. Cut. Action. So once you're in the Trailblazer community, you can go ahead and log in. And once you have logged in, you can come down and click on create a case under success plan and contact support. Once you do that, you can follow the prompts by scrolling down, clicking on 
Excel's Cloud. As you can see here, you can hover over these eyes and actually see what further items by selecting this, uh, it'll give you um, to essentially select them so you can raise the right case and it goes to the right team. So once we've gone ahead and select sales in that case, uh, you can see how it says accounts, contacts, and person accounts. I'm going to select that. I'm going to click next. And in this case, we are looking to enable person accounts in our particular organization. So I'm gonna click next. And then in here, it's gonna give me uh, a few articles to say, hey, please don't forget um, to have a look at these things. Once we've uh, gone ahead and done that, uh, in this case, we've actually done all the actions that are listed in Enable Person Accounts. If I show you this particular art article, uh, and we scroll down, these are all the different changes that we made, um, and we clicked on Select Allow Customer Support to Enable Person Accounts. Once we've done all of that, we need to come down here and create a case. And you'll notice the case subject will be pre-filled in. And we go ahead and add descriptions, like please enable person account. We have followed uh, the instructions. in uh, the article listed below. You know, I'm just gonna tell them that, hey, we've, uh, we have in fact followed these instructions. Please enable it for us. Um, and I'm gonna paste the article in there because I do not need to write all the steps again and again and again. Uh, in this case, the business impact is we need to start using person accounts for B2C. Uh, processes in the business. Now in this case, uh, you can certainly put in the number of Salesforce uh, users that will in fact be using person accounts. If it's the entire organization, then you put in how many of the licenses you have. So in this case, I'm going to put in one. Uh, yes, it is going to affect both internal and external uh, because essentially you're going to um, need to provide some level of um, interaction and therefore record the right details around person accounts uh, as part of that B2C process. So in this case, no, there is no workaround in place. Um, is there a pending, uh, is there pending development go live? Uh, yes, um, this, we are hoping to have this sorted in two so we can launch our new process. As an example, you'll notice it'll automatically copy the org ID, the instance type in this case, it is production. Uh, and yes, we did go ahead and grant login access to Southfall support. Um, outside of that, it will ask you to select your best time zone uh, so that you can be contacted during business hours in that time zone. Uh, in this case, we are using Lightning and um, it's up to you guys uh, what you'd like to advise sales for support, what your skill level is, but in this case, it really shouldn't matter. Um, they will still go ahead and ask you um, before they enable it, saying that, okay, you acknowledge that you've completed them, please reply back to us, uh, and further acknowledge that you, in fact, have completed it properly. If they find any issues, they will let you know. Uh, and in this case, um, we're doing it in Sales Cloud. You can go ahead and add uh, additional case collaborators, for example, if you've got any other colleagues within the uh, organization that need to be across this particular process. And then you just click submit, and that'll go ahead and create a case. I'm not gonna do that right now, but um, as part of your process, you certainly will need to. We've gone ahead and, and, and enabled person accounts in our live orgs. Um, also, one more thing to remember, if you're doing this in a development org and you're following what I'm doing, uh, there will be some features and some functionality like person accounts that cannot be enabled in a developer org. Um, I'm hoping Salesforce will eventually change that as time goes on, but right now that functionality is not available. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please ensure you subscribe to this channel so you can get all the brand new episodes that are coming up. Please also ensure you share this material if you liked it and make sure you click here for some more videos.